Okay, well, this uh, section is uh, about forces, um, and in particular, Newton's second law of motion. So this is uh, this is a uh, quite a, a useful and interesting topic at uh, at A level. So that's what this video is aimed aimed at in the main uh, at uh, at supporting A level. Um, so let's just have a look. So Newton, so this is Newton here sitting under the tree with the apple just about to drop on his head, um, and that's how the story goes. Probably never happened, um, but. Uh, Maybe it did, and if it did, it certainly inspired him to um, do to make some great advances in physics and mechanics. So, uh, Newton's second law is essentially, well, really, what it comes down to is this this famous equation: um, force equals mass times acceleration. And um, as with all equations like these, uh, what it means is that if we know two two of these things, it helps us to. To, to find out the other. <clears throat> now, when we look at um, um, the categories of problems that we get in this area, um, then we're looking at, at, at linear uh, motion, i.e. in a straight line, um, and also rotational. Um, Within that, we've, we've got equilibrium problems. Now, equilibrium problems uh, arise from when we're looking at um, forces which are in balance, and so therefore there's no acceleration. Um, equilibrium problems also actually includes constant velocity. Um, so things could be moving at a, a, a constant uh, velocity, and that would be regarded as being in equilibrium. Most of the problems that you get uh, at A level um, Actually, uh, there is no motion, but uh, it doesn't exclude the possibility of uh, constant velocity. And the other class uh, is uh, where there is acceleration. So, um, and there are some really nice, interesting problems in in uh, in, in the linear area. Um, <clears throat> however, um, in rotational. Um, motion we don't we don't cover this at a level <clears throat> it's a shame and if you're ever going to be a, a mechanic a, a mechanical engineer uh, i should say then um, this area here is actually going to be is quite relevant it's all to do with torque and moments of inertia and, uh, and stuff like that okay so um so we're sort of covering three out of these four possibilities from this sort of matrix of two by two Okay, so let's just wind on a little bit. Um, now, all these problems that you'll face um, essentially use the same same units. I mean, uh, meters, seconds, kilograms. You're all uh, you'll be familiar with all of those. Um, some problems will state things maybe in kilometers or in grams, and you have to, you'll have to convert them, or maybe hours. You you know, you don't have to do some conversion, but that's uh, that would be no. Uh, Great uh, difficulty. Uh, Newton's is going to is something that is new to you probably if you haven't done forces before. Uh, and the definition of a newton is it's the force that's required to accelerate one kilogram at one meter per second per second. So Newton is a measure of, of force. <clears throat> okay. So um, and it's very important that we actually kind of sort of understand that and that we use Newton's uh, correctly. Okay, just move on. Um, mass and weight. So it is very uh, important not to confuse mass and weight. Mass is a, a an immutable sort of property of, uh, of, uh, of an object uh, and it carries that, that, uh, that property, that mass, whether it's uh, sitting on the surface of the Earth, on the Moon, in outer space, or 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 wherever it is, um, the weight uh, is actually a force. Weight is a force. Weight will be measured in newtons. Those mass is measured in kilograms. Weight is measured in in newtons. <clears throat> um, now you will have come across the the constant g which is the acceleration due to gravity and even if you haven't done it in 
in physics or um, anywhere else. You've probably heard it, you know, in, in terms of, I don't know, traveling a spaceship, you know, experiencing a force of 3G or, or whatever. <clears throat> That's a force, force, uh, 3G. So the, the, um, the gravitational uh, constant G uh, normally take as being 9.8 meters per second per second, sometimes 10 meters per second per second. That's the acceleration due to gravity. And um, so the consequence of that is that uh, a mass, if this is on the Earth, a mass of um, three kilograms on Earth would experience a, a force, a downward force, which is due to its own weight of uh, 3g, 3g newtons. So if g, we're taking g, approximating it to 10 meters per second per second, three kilograms would experience a downward force of uh, 30 newtons. Okay. <clears throat> um, so uh, yes, mass is not weight. Mass is a, it's a property really, which is, uh, it, it kind of describes the you know inertia of an object so um in order to accelerate it we need more force um so that's kind of what uh, what what mass is but don't confuse mass and weight okay more on that so we'll you know we're obviously this is going to come into some of the examples we'll do in this section um <clears throat> Okay, so the problems that we're going to face in this, um, it, 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 you know, in this section, uh, there's a whole variety of things. The scenarios, uh, you know, could be, you know, on level surfaces, on inclined planes, you know, they could be connected by strings and ropes, sometimes pulleys involved, um, things in lifts, um, so some quite interesting problems there. Um, ladders leaning on walls uh, and also quite importantly we get systems of connected particles um, and, and those are some of the more probably difficult questions um, but I think overall in this section on forces really the, there are not that many different principles that we have to understand and certainly the calculation processes that we use are are pretty straightforward you know most of the time if you can multiply and add then um you know you, you're sort of in the good uh, in a good position obviously you need some algebra skills as well in order to be able to to use um the basic formula basically f equals ma being the main one um <clears throat> the main challenge in these kind of problems really comes in analyzing the problem um a lot of these mechanics problems seem to be very, very wordy and can be a little bit daunting when you when you first look at them. But but most of the most of the problem statement really uh, is about providing information. And so what is really important when we do these problems is to uh, we need a diagram. We need a good, clear diagram. Um, and that is true probably generally throughout uh, throughout maths, throughout A level maths, certainly in uh in mechanics and uh, and definitely in these uh, forces problems so uh so yeah we need a nice clear diagram um very often there'll be a diagram given with the question i advise you not to try and adapt that and to scroll on it and, and write draw your own diagram with uh, clear objects on it um, I also uh, suggest that what you do is um, don't put the units on. <clears throat> when you start putting units on diagrams, it can start to look a bit confusing. The, the best way I found uh, of, <clears throat> of doing your diagrams is really is to, uh, the, the units are more or less implied by where they are on the diagram. So here, We've got a particle, it's a box or a block of wood, or it doesn't matter. A particle, that number inside there is the mass. Uh, we have forces here, 
and at the on 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 this arrow on the, uh, here that would be a force in newtons and obviously the arrow is direct, is <laughs> giving you the direction of the force uh here's a double headed arrow uh this is an acceleration okay so I strongly suggest that you adopt a convention um similar to this uh maybe this one um which gives you the sort of the the, the clearest view of what's going on okay so that is that now um just another uh, concept we want to go across is the idea of net force um net force the uh, zero on a particle in any, any particular direction means that it will be in equilibrium i.e no acceleration in that direction so here we have a particle of 10 kilograms we've got a force pushing or pulling it to the right of 30 newtons one pushing it or pulling it to the left of 30 newtons so there is um this means that the net force we look in any particular direction this is 30 minus 30 uh, for this left hand force uh, net force in this horizontal rightward or no total horizontal direction is zero and therefore there will be zero acceleration now i haven't drawn any forces going acting in any any other direction in a vertical direction here so um you know, there may well be acceleration there. Okay, so that is the um, the idea of net force. And in dynamics, um, basically, we're going to require two of F, M, or A to solve for the other. Um, possibly, if the force is made up of, in this case here, there are two forces that there are acting on a single mass, giving it an acceleration. And, uh, and we might know some of that. So in other words, we, we're still using this equation um, um, by substituting the things that we know to give us, in this case, this is a force uh, sub A, F, F sub A. OK, so that is really getting started um, on um, uh, on uh, uh, forces um so what we've done just to recap uh we've looked at uh, units uh, <laughs> we've talked about equilibrium problems against acceleration problems uh we've talked about the difference between mass and weight um we've talked about um problem analysis and how we go about actually addressing the problems uh and, and solving them successfully um, and then, of course, it's a, again, we just talked about the idea of net force, which is kind of rolled into these other ideas anyway. OK, so uh, I think that will do us for now. And uh, in the next video, we'll be looking at um, uh, some of the concepts um, behind uh, forces. OK, and I'll see you then.